Hello Linux fans, Rob here. I hope you enjoyed the opening intro there. That was my son, Chase, who is 13. He's been taking guitar lessons for a few years and we're Van Halen fans. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Well, we're going to dig into Apricity OS. So I'll pull up a few notes here. And this is more of a preview, uh, not a detailed review. Uh, Apricity Linux OS 07.2016. So this has been, I think, a somewhat anticipated uh, release. If you're uh, looking into the forums um, and looking at other reviews, you'll, you'll see, uh, I think, favorable reviews of Apricity. And uh, it's based off of Arch Linux, which has a strong following and uh, has made a lot of news in the Linux community with a lot of uh, followers. And uh, I think, uh, for the most part, you see favorable um, news coming out of the uh, Arch group. So uh, this is a rolling release uh, so you'll see updates to the latest software as things progress with this OS. Uh, currently it comes in two desktop flavors that would be GNOME and Cinnamon and it's uh, running Linux kernel 4.6 so kind of a quick rundown there and again, in that this is a preview, I do want to talk about the install process. For whatever reason, I've had issues installing Arch-based distros in the past. Um, weeks back, I tried to install uh, Manjaro Linux and ran into issues there where I would uh, come up with an invalid partition when, uh, when I would go into reboot from the install. I could boot the live, um, live USB drive and boot in in a live environment and operate just fine but the install would bring up an invalid partition upon boot. So I ran into the same issue uh, here with Apricity. Um, I resolved it by instead of standard install or install alongside or install using entire disk I went into manual mode and actually set up the partitions myself and that did the trick. Upon boot, I always do a reboot immediately just to make sure everything's going to reboot and, uh, and load up. And during that reboot, I just kind of made a mental count and came in at about 15 seconds boot time. So from the moment I hit power on to the moment I had a uh, desktop loaded and ready to go was 15 seconds, which is just fantastic. You compare that to a Windows 10, Windows 7 machine, and uh, there's just it's night and day. So I'm just out of the gate seeing some some nice speed, uh, poking around, opening you know file manager, etc. It seems very fast and fluid. So I'm impressed by a couple of other things that they've done here. Uh, Arch traditionally um, has a reputation for being a, a difficult uh, Linux OS to use, and so the Manjaro team and the Apricity team have come along and they have managed to make Arch not only attractive but also very user friendly and uh, I applaud Apricity for uh, doing what they've done here as we run down some of the pre-installed software. I will say that the only thing that you've seen, hey I'm running low on battery here, we've got to make this a quick review. I will say that um, the layout that you see here is standard fare with the exception of applications. I put that menu there so we could run through it. Also I've increased the font size so that if you're running this or looking at this review on your phone or a small tablet hopefully you'll be able to see this. The current hardware I have right now is an 11 inch tablet. It's a Dell tablet, Intel based. Um, kind of a hybrid system and so it's, it's got a high DPI screen so I've had to crank up the font size and everything and uh, hopefully you're able to see this okay. We're going to run down through the uh, pre-installed applications. If you go into accessories you have your basics calculator, file manager, uh, HP device manager which is nice and root terminal which is nice to have. Also included, well, let's go back here, also included was simple backup. Uh, education you've got math from LibreOffice under games we have play on Linux and Steam so uh, uh, from what I've read uh, Steam running on arch based systems does fairly well under graphics you have GIMP, Inkscape and uh, LibreDraw under internet and this was surprising 
uh, the default browser installed was Google Chrome. Uh, you'll see Chromium in the list simply be because I installed Chromium and I'll get into that in just a minute. You also see Drive and that's part of why I installed Chromium. Uh, and then Ice. So Ice is a wrapper for online uh, web apps, uh, cloud-based uh, software like Google Apps for example and we'll certainly get into that in just a minute but ICE was the reason I installed Chromium and we'll talk about that. Under Office you have the uh, standard Fair Libre Office again very nice uh, office package haven't gone in and dug in to see what version uh, Libre just released a newer version a week or so ago uh, good reviews there uh, programming you have QT4 under sound and video uh, standard fare there was cheese rhythm box I installed simple screen recorder to make this re review and then the standard known videos you also will see under sundry that you have iced tea uh, pre-installed which is nice um, I, I, I assume they put that in there because they installed Chrome and they want Chrome to function as it should with media etc also under applications you'll have an activities overview so you can click that and you'll be launched into your virtual desktops all right and then if we go over here to places which is standard again on the taskbar it'll give you a rundown of your folder hierarchy there from home downloads and then categories under music pictures video or your uh, computer so as far as what is pre-installed how it's laid out um, appearance wise they've installed a custom theme to give you a very nice selection of attractive round icons um, this theme installed everything so you don't see missing icons it looks um, cohesive and uniform throughout the OS that I found so far I'm going to move over here to the right side of the taskbar and you see battery sound and network those three icons do not have independent actions so if you click battery or you click sound or you click network you see the same menu drop down which is sound brightness network battery which is we're getting down there um, and then user information and then on the very bottom and this may be too small to see you see settings which will take you into your global settings screen lock uh, log out and power down so again very intuitive uh, we chose one of the um, I don't know exactly what it's called but um, accessibility uh, features uh, built in and I've chose large text just to help help increase the font size something else I want to point out that was pre-installed is caffeine so with caffeine let's take this off pardon me so with caffeine you're able to suspend your screensaver or screen logout uh, it's very nice to have that pre-installed I've in the past had issues getting caffeine to run properly uh, from a base install so to have that pre-installed and functioning is excellent and then we come to a problem so I want to bring this up just in case anyone else has the same issue now I did a fresh download and install of Apricity this morning so that we could do this preview and immediately uh, you know one of the first things you do if you install Linux is you look for updates and we had 92 updates available so went through the regular process of apply went to commit password and this is the error message I get failed to commit transaction error invoking external downloader now wasn't sure what the problem was there but I know in the past uh, during updates some Linux distros require that you have the the um, USB that you if you installed off of a USB or CD whichever they install that uh, they require that media to be present in the system so that uh, you can do your updates so I tried that and it still did not work so there's something up there we'll dig into it later uh, for sake of battery time here I'm going to continue on uh, we'll find out what the culprit is and, and I'm sure there's a, a fix for that so 
told you earlier about ice, so I do want to dig back into ice because this is a very nice feature to have pre-installed. So ICE allows you to take any online, so if we just did Google, and uh, well actually, let me go back, let me go back. Come forward slash mail, let's see if that does the trick. No. And look at me, I entered that in the wrong location. The first tab is name, so we're gonna say Gmail. And then you simply type in the URL. Uh, here it is selected Chromium, okay? And we had Chrome pre-installed, however, when I launched ICE, it would not recognize Chrome. And so I went in to check and make sure Chrome was set as default, it was, so I just installed Chromium, which it picked up on right away. Again, don't know what the issue is there, but we got it to work. Now we're going to use the Favorcon from the web app. And so you see that uh, changed over to Google's G, and we're going to click Apply. So the way this works, we'll close that out. And I've got, um, I've got under Internet here, I've got Google Drive set up. So the way that works is once you launch the, um, well, come on, mouse. What in the world is going on? So once you launch the app, it's not really an app. It's, it's essentially the, the web browser, but it's put in a wrapper, a window wrapper, so that it can be treated like an app where you can minimize windows, um, minimize windows, open windows, place, uh, place windows in half the screen, quarter of the screen, that kind of thing and uh, treat it as if it were an app. I love the idea, the principle behind it. It's an SSB. I, um, there are others uh, on the market that do the same thing. ICE, uh, as I tried it earlier, uh, just poking around with the system, does everything it needs to do. Uh, I like the idea behind this and I think we're going to see more progress there because as things start to converge, um, well, you see it in Android all the time. You see people taking their web app, putting a wrapper around it, releasing it in the Android store as an app. So you install that on your tablet or your phone. Uh, really and truly, a lot of people don't know it, but what you're doing is using their web app in a wrapper. So this is kind of the same thing. It works. It allows you to put icons and launchers uh, into Linux and, and use it in a, in a fashion that a lot of people are familiar with. So, excuse me, so I like the idea behind it and, and I'd like to see more of that kind of thing occur and I think we will. So anyway, so far nicely done. We've got a few glitches, had you know a, a glitch with the install, but that could be user error, uh, a glitch here with the updates. But everything I see, it's, it's attractive, it's fast. Um, nothing crazy that I can tell so far that has been done to GNOME. I think it's your standard fair gnome it, other than being themed. Uh, but I think for a first time user they wouldn't be scared away of this distro. I think um, I think they'd start to kind of feel at home uh, pretty quickly. So that's going to wrap it up for now. We're going to wrap it up for now and uh, I may dig into this for a week or so and come back with a part two more in-depth review. Hope this helps and we'll catch you later.